on so many software projects, the management will be like team, 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 and talk about how we're a close knit team, but then they're measuring everybody independently. And if software development's teamwork, then we need to make it easy that if one team member needs help from another, they don't have to create a new user story in the backlog or figure out how it's going to impact the estimate. And all the time you thought you saved on having an accurate estimate goes completely out the window because people are now waiting for someone else and they can't even move forward until they they become unblocked. Ever since the world started relying on software for it seems like everything these days, managers and programmers have been locked in a bitter battle over how long is it going to take to build something? Developers often argue it's impossible, and managers often argue we have to have predictability if we can pay you. Now, whether that's true or not is for a different video, but today I want to do my best to try to educate you about why estimates and software development are so unreliable. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to give you some things if you are forced to estimate that will at least reduce the impact of how bad things go when those estimates are wrong. Let me launch into seven reasons why in software development estimates are incredibly unreliable. The first reason software development estimates are very unreliable is because the type of work that we do is not repeatable. If you're working at a manufacturing plant, for example, and your job is to drill holes in a particular part and you're doing that every day, chances are there's other people at the company. If you get sick, they're also trained to do that exact same work, but the amount of variability in that work, it doesn't change that much. In software development, every developer writes code differently. You know this because if you go out to like Leet Code or Hacker Rank, every question that's on there for a test that a programmer could try to pass has multiple correct answers. The second reason why software development estimates tend to be really unreliable is because there's just way too many variables. If you think about it, if you try to estimate anything on a software project, you're not just estimating the effort to write the code. You're also trying to guess how many problems are you going to run into. In programming, we're often dealing with hundreds, if not thousands of variables, classes, methods, keywords every day when we write code. And so just the volume of the different things that we're dealing with, every single one of those, anything going wrong or becoming unpredictable or being deeper in complexity than we thought can make the estimate just basically meaningless when we go to actually do the work. The third reason software development estimates are often extremely unreliable is that usually there's a very surface understanding of what's really needed to build it. I'm sure you've been on a scrum or Kanban or any kind of process project before and the product owner or the business or the customer is talking to you as a developer and trying to describe what the software should do and they're really good often at describing the user interface of the software but as soon as you start to talk about let's say reports being generated or business logic that needs to happen or different conditions with orders let's say being in different states and what should happen in all those various situations i often find product owners and customers and businesses can get very mentally tired just talking through it, trying to figure it out themselves. So one of the biggest reasons software development estimates can actually be really low reliability is because as a team, we tend not to spend enough time on everything that's needed to estimate the software. We really spend a lot of times on the things that are most easy to understand by the business people. The fourth reason software development estimates often are super unreliable is because most of the time we're trying to combine two technologies that were designed in isolation together for the first time ever. If you go out on GitHub, there are hundreds of thousands of open source projects out there, and many software products are taking one library or technology or, you know, SaaS platform, software as a service platform tool, and trying to combine it with another. Well, that SaaS product may have an API on it, but it's only been designed in isolation with a bunch of assumptions about if I get plugged in to another product or another technology, these are the only various ways we can think of as a company that are going to be needed to do that. 
Well, when you then go to plug into that technology, your product may not be able to meet all the requirements by what was already there. The fifth reason software development estimates are often extremely unreliable is because most teams don't put enough investment in diagnostic output of what they build. What I mean by this is when you're building a feature or an API or a library, there's always things that can go wrong, error handling, right? And we've got tools for logging, we've got tools for monitoring. However, that I find tends to be one of the first places that companies will cut corners when they're under a time crunch or they're just rushing to get to market. So if you're a company building a product and you're using a third party library or tool and that team didn't do a good job building good error handling and monitoring and troubleshooting, I'm sure you've experienced as a developer, you can waste enormous amounts of time going out on Stack Overflow or wherever trying to hunt down this weird, obscure error that you got. I mean, I've been on projects where two weeks were spent simply trying to figure out why in a various library there was a memory leak under one situation. How could you possibly predict that? You can't. The sixth reason that software development estimates are often really unreliable is because software development itself is knowledge work. The thing that's different about software development that a lot of people don't think about when they manage software development is we are not a bunch of assembly workers that are just performing a repeatable task we're trained once and we just get better at doing it over and over and over again. Every single user story that we get handed has some unique aspects to it. And the only way to overcome that is with our mind and thinking through it. So if you put developers under a time crunch and pressure them in management, you're actually fighting against what you want. You want to get work done quicker, but you're actually not giving the person the time to actually think about it. I talked about almost five years ago in one of the earliest videos on the channel about creative software development and the fact that the way that we really improve productivity on a software development team is not by working faster or harder. It's by being more creative and writing less lines of code and coming up with more elegant designs. And the only way we can do that is if we're under less pressure. And that leads me to the seventh reason why software development estimates are often so unreliable. And that's because often we assume that people can do all their work in isolation and there's not much teamwork that's needed. It blows my mind how on so many software projects, the management will be like team, 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 and talk about how we're a close knit team, but then they're measuring everybody independently. They're having everybody independently estimate their work. And if software development's teamwork, then we need to make it easy that if one team member needs help from another, they don't have to create a new user story in the backlog or figure out how it's going to impact the estimate. Otherwise, people get blocked and all the time you thought you saved on having an accurate estimate goes completely out the window because people are now waiting for someone else and they can't even move forward until they become unblocked. So with all those reasons why estimates and software development tend to be really unreliable, let me give you a few things that I think will really help you. If you are on a team that is forced to estimate, at least reduce the impact that when those estimates, I believe, will be inevitably wrong, that the impact of them being wrong will be a little bit less. The first thing you can do to reduce the impact of bad estimates is to reduce the amount of what you're estimating. If you think you're going to estimate six months worth of work, anything in those six months going wrong is now multiplied times the total amount of things that you've committed to or estimated. So if you want to reduce the impact of a bad estimate, predict less commit to less. I talked about this in my last video, but one of the biggest problems I see in our industry is we're still treating story points as ours. And story points were a realization by our industry that estimates are not reliable. And so they were really a way for a team every sprint to try to look at, okay, here's a list of 10 things. Which of these are large? Which of these are medium? Which of these are small? Realizing that we can't predictably estimate them in hours and basically come up with a larger unit. But the purpose was to break the work down into the smallest units of work that we can think of and try to pick small things so that if the estimate is wrong, the impact of that is smaller. 
We didn't come up with story points to just convert them to hours, pretend we can predictably estimate software development, and then cram as much as possible into a sprint. That's literally trying to optimize software development as though it's not knowledge work, and it's not teamwork, and it's not unpredictable. The second thing you can do to reduce the impact of an estimate being wrong is never hold one developer to the estimate of another. If one person looks at a set of tasks or one task even that they're gonna do, and they're trying to come up with how long it's gonna take, remember they're guessing, they're doing their best to think through it, they're using their perspective and their unique mind to come up with the way that they would design it, the way they would code it to solve that problem. And even if they got in a room and did you know, planning poker, I did a whole video on that in the past, there's still a different approach often in the mindset of each individual person. So if somebody gets sick and somebody else all of a sudden has to come take over their work, or there's just some reason that one developer is now responsible for a different person's task, holding them to the original estimate is basically saying, you need to automatically absorb what was in the mind of a different person than you and write the code exactly the same way that they did. And I'm sorry, that's just not how software development works. So if you really want to reduce the impact of bad estimates, you got to do your best to make sure people who estimate work are the same ones that implement it. The third thing you can do to reduce the impact of bad estimates is to really break your work up more into functional components. What I mean by this is, remember how I talked about earlier that the business tends to see visible and surface requirements around the product, and that's where they often want to spend their time. Well, as a developer, if you can take more time thinking, okay, I might be building this one form or this one screen, let's say, that places an order, but for me to really complete this, I need to actually build the UI portion. I may have to build some email sent that go out and send emails to people when this happens. I may have to talk to a payment processor and actually notify them that some money was sent. I may have to talk to my supply chain and say I'm now consuming this product that I just sold. And pausing and thinking about all those individual service calls and those different things that you're going to have to do in each of the integration points, if you don't take the time to do that, you're basically holding yourself to an estimate that has a surface level understanding. So I would just really encourage you, if you're a developer out there, take the time to really think through all the software components the best you can before you start a sprint, if you are doing Scrum, or before you start a task, if you're doing Kanban, and try to think of all the different individual components that you have to build, not just the visible ones, and make sure that you add some time for each of those and add them all up together before you give any kind of estimate out to anybody. The fourth thing you can do to reduce the chance that there's bad estimates in the first place is choose familiar technologies. I see so many people on teams where they just go out on GitHub or go out on NPM JS or anywhere there's a repo of different technologies and they just cherry pick all these technologies and they put together this Frankenstein stack that nobody's seen before. And then they're frustrated that the estimates are so unreliable. If you really want to have less stress on your project, be a little bit more careful to choose technologies that might be a little bit more proven. I think as developers, we often think by picking the latest, greatest technology for each component of our stack, that's going to increase our value in the marketplace. And that's not necessarily true because as I'm sure you've seen, people will write articles about how this hot new technology is the new thing that's going to take over the last thing. And you fast forward a year or two and it completely dies and disappears. So one of the best things you can do if you really want to have a less stressful software project and you're forced to estimate is just be a little bit more conservative about picking technologies that are already proven. The fifth thing you can do that'll reduce the chance that bad estimates have a really negative impact on your project is pick technologies with native integration with others. What I mean by this is rather than if you've got some billing system and you need to integrate it with your product, trying to write a custom component that ties those two things together that you're now responsible for as a team and you got to test it, you got to deploy it, you got to manage it, troubleshoot it. If you can find a native connector between one system and another 
another. Let's say SAP was made to connect to PeopleSoft or, you know, this payment processor was made to connect to this email marketing software. If it's got a native integration with it, sure, maybe it doesn't do 100% of the things that you'd like it to, but if you can get enough of the requirements handled out of the box, convince the product owner, let's say, that that's going to save them a lot of money because ultimately it's going to reduce the chance that estimates are bad. I just find the longer I've worked in this industry, picking off the shelf technologies that were already designed to work together is a huge way that you can reduce some of the uncertainty and therefore the negative impact of bad estimates. And the sixth and final thing you can do to reduce the impact of bad estimates is just to stop using estimates altogether. I'm not going to take a lot of time to talk about this today because I'm going to make some other videos because this is a complicated topic. But honestly, the best thing you can do if you want great throughput for your customer and to release really valuable software that's getting you the highest return on investment is to stop wasting all the time in meetings and questioning each other and trying to predict the future and trying to massage the burn down chart. But until then, most of us do have to estimate in some way or another. And so I hope this video helped a little bit. Are you still forced to estimate as a developer? Are you maybe a project manager or a scrum master out there and you feel that your upper management is forcing you to estimate? Leave me some comments on some of the reasons you've heard for why that has to happen because I want to talk about in some future videos alternate ways of convincing business people that we don't need estimates. And I think I could do a better job at that the more feedback I get from y'all. So until next time, thanks.